It is Tuesday night. Junior DJ's at. I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's time for the DJ Roundtable Show. And hopefully you're enjoying yourself here and having fun. As well as you're enjoying yourself on a Tuesday night in beautiful springtime in the northern uh, hemisphere of the of, of the United States. And uh, as always, we appreciate you for stopping by here, saying hi, talking. And if you got any questions or anything like that, please put it down in the chat. It is greatly appreciated when people do that. And if you're watching it on YouTube, which I do broadcast, rebroadcast this on YouTube, if it drops to Monday after the show at 12 o'clock, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do me a favor. Make sure you smash the like button. So give it a thumbs up. Make sure you smash the subscribe button so you follow the channel. And make sure you check the bell icon so you know when new stuff drops. I did a live the other day just talking about some stuff upcoming, which I'm going to go over here in a second. <clears throat> and you have to excuse me a little bit because the fact that we are starting allergy season. And I already got my first allergy report saying that trees are high. So, yeah, it's fun. Uh <laughs> Want to thank you all for tuning in and everything like that and having fun with everyone. Uh, a couple things we have coming up. You want to take some notes. Uh, we have a couple really, really great guests coming on. Uh, coming on next week, I'm going to have Nick from NIC Customs DJ Booths. He is a New Jersey based DJ booth manufacturer who makes all the cool booths, including a uh, booth which I would uh, definitely put up against uh, Brettley's. Uh, Toadmatic booth. It looks really cool. Uh, and you know, he, he knows uh, uh he knows Toad, he knows them over there and sends a lot of love to him. I also have coming on is Dave Rothstein, the Dave Rothstein uh band. He is a very big famous band here in Chicago. He actually did uh Donnie and uh Jenny's uh wedding at uh the uh Hotel in St. Charles, and I'm drawing a blank right now which hotel it is. A Hotel Baker. I had to think about it for a second there. In uh, St. Charles, he did their weddings and other summer celebrity weddings. He's going to come on here and talk about how can us as DJs work with bands and work with um, and work more with bands and probably work with them uh, more seamlessly. Because sometimes I know some of us have worked with bands, some of us have not. This is a few things that could help you grow your business as someone who can work with a band and knows how to do uh, stuff for bands and help a band out when they need some help. Then the third uh, person I've come on or a third uh, fun person come on, that third person coming on is going to be a wedding and event coordinator out of Rockford, uh, Danica. She's going to come on the 30th. So, again, next week I have uh, NIC booths, NIC custom DJ booths. Uh, again, he's out of New Jersey. Uh, he will ship throughout the U.S., but shipping is a few bucks. So you may want to plan to hook up a trailer up and go there. Or he, what well, I was talking to today, he has people fly in, rent a U-Haul, and drive back to wherever they're from. Uh, week after that, again, Dave Rothstein for the Dave Rothstein, um, uh, Dave Rothstein band and group. Uh, he is a great guy, uh, always great information, lots of great knowledge about weddings and events. Um, and then uh, third one would be Danica, which I've worked with plenty of times. Tracy and I have worked with her, I don't know, a dozen times now uh, dealing with weddings. Um, she's a great person to work with and great person to partner with. And uh, I know some of you guys are not that fun or fans or or they feel that uh, wedding coordinators are not the best people sometimes. I think it's the person you're dealing with. Just like I'm sure there's people that don't think DJs are really great or they don't think photographers are really great. It all boils down to who you run into. And that's the key thing to think about. Um, <laughs> Adrian E says, please, please stay seated. No autographs uh, have checked in. There you go. That That's the way to do it. And that's uh you know, Danny and uh, and Jenny's uh, wedding there at the uh, Hotel Baker. Um, he would give a little insight on some of the things he had to do to make sure for security reasons. Uh, because, you know, again, when you're dealing with someone famous like that, 
paparazzi and you know people want to take pictures and stuff like that he had jumped for a few hoops for him and his uh his his uh bandmates for stuff um and he'll go through all that we'll ask him some questions uh when he's on here uh in, in two weeks so again make notes you have some uh i have some guests coming on here and uh always never know who's going to pop in say hi or stop by or say whatever uh, one other cool thing also I wanted to say to, uh, today, I had actually a wedding yesterday, a Monday wedding, and uh, I got one of the coolest things, uh, both Tracy and I got it. It is my name, 3D printed and hand painted. The groom made this, Tyler. Uh, he printed this. He printed one for everyone there and then hand painted the gold on it. It's black. And then hand painted the gold on there, gave it to everyone. Uh, I did have a little stand for it, and unfortunately, the little stand got knocked off, so I got glued back on. <laughs> but I have that. That's a that's a cool uh, little memento for our wedding or wedding gift, you could say for uh, someone. And uh, that's kind of a, a fun thing. So I'm going to ask the panel of this tonight. Um, first thing first, is anyone excited about having some more guests on? Coming on to the show. Okay. <laughs> all right. I see hands. Thumbs up. Wow. You guys all speak at one time. <laughs> oh, you mentioned Danica, and then I had to go. Look. That's what I was doing. I was looking back at my emails, and that's why I sent you the IM. Weddings by Danica. Yep. I worked with her at one of the swankier venues in Wisconsin, the Swan Barn, Swan Barn Door in the Wisconsin Dells. Yep. And uh, funny story with that was they were supposed to have a ceremony musician, but something happened and he made it for part of social hour or something like that. So I wound up doing the ceremony on the fly or something funny like that. And he just strolls in casually right when he felt like it. It was really kind of surreal. But that when you mentioned your name, I'm like, I had to go back through my notes and see who you were talking about because you said Rockford. Yep. So that, I, is, I'm, that is her. I'm more than excited to talk to her again. It's been a minute. Yep. She will be here. And again, this, this is how small of a world it is. Uh, you know, you get to work with great people. You remember those great people. And uh, it's always fun uh, working with other professionals that uh, make you excited to work with them again. And actually, last night I got a chance to work with uh, a photographer I worked with before, husband and wife. Um I worked with them the wedding I did uh, in uh, 22 at uh, Tinley Park Adventure Center with 260 people. This wedding last night was 65, 70, but nice little wedding for a Monday night. It was uh, very fun, uh, very nice. If you uh, follow us on social media, on Instagram, you can see some pictures of uh, of everything. Uh, outdoor ceremony there uh, after the eclipse. Everyone was getting dressed during the eclipse. This is after the eclipse. Uh, so it was, it was 70 degrees here, sunny, not cloud in the sky. Beautiful day. Um, and uh, I know we all dealt with the eclipse yesterday, had fun with it. Uh, I know uh, uh, Jordan Taylor, myself, um, I think, Dwayne, you guys got pretty good amount of blockage. We got 94.5% here. And then further west or further east is less and less and less. Um, so did anyone during the great, uh, eclipse yesterday, did anyone get anything weird happening to them? No, not nothing. Wow. I know some people were saying that some weird stuff happened during the eclipse. So that's why I was like, eh, maybe something weird happened. You never know. Uh, we well, I know my, my students came back. They were sleepy today. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. That's it. They were sleepy. <laughs> We didn't get to see any of it up in Wisconsin, where I was in Wisconsin. It was just cloudy the entire time. Oh. But, you know, when you're saying, you know, weird or funny things happening, I'm not going to lie, you know, knowing this is the retrograde portion of the month thingy, whatever. Yeah. Between that and, you know, the eclipse, I, there are some weird things going on, be it egos of, you know, DJs, both club and wedding, which I've been dealing with at the club I booked today for the entire day. Like I thought I was doing tax, you know, finishing my taxes from last year and that never got done. So weird goings on has been like kind of the theme these past few days for me. 
Well, so maybe it is, la it is lacrosse, and uh, Code Blue Cam does showcase a lot of your fun fellow residents up there who uh, love to uh, – they love going to your jail, and they love going to um, – I'm guessing love the going to meet your good. officers. Uh, you know, maybe something's good over there, and I got to go check it out. Maybe I should do something stupid just to join everybody. No, for no, night. no. I would, I would say, I would say no. You don't. You don't. You, <laughs> I, I know you. I, I know that uh, you, you talk to a few officers professionally as well as yeah. doing the wrong things before. And the, the, the thing is that we don't I, want that to happen again. Um, and we don't want you to again. To those people right there that. Are on that on that channel, I, I, I my heart goes out to them for for them having problems and stuff like that. But uh, a lot of them bring that upon themselves. So right, quite. And this is the thing: is that we don't want no one causing trouble anywhere at any of our gigs either. And thank goodness for those uh, men and women who uh, put on the badge every day, uh, as well as firefighters and everyone else who uh, works every day tirelessly to uh, serve the public. Doesn't matter if you're working for a uh, uh, in the city of Chicago streets and sanitation, or if you're suburbs, uh, public works, or if you're another area, uh, street maintenance worker, anyone who does things to deal with the public every day, it's a hard thing. And that's where my first question goes for today is dealing with the public and dealing with being prepared for things. So when you prepare for a wedding or an event and you get ready for it, do you do one of two things? And I, I, I'll explain to this to you what I do. I don't have a pre-written script to tell you, walk you through every single thing going on. I have basically cue cards. They say, you know, bridal uh, processional, you know, it has the officiant song, so forth, so on. doesn't say anything for me to say. I do everything I say. Uh, you know, basically in the moment, it's natural. It is what's happening. I see what's going on. I don't have a pre-written script, especially for introductions. Tracy and I both uh, split MC work for introductions. But the thing is that I don't have a written out script saying that, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Stan or do this. And I was wondering, do you guys have a script that you follow or do you just watch and just have the names of the songs you know, whatever way you have it written down saying, you know, grand entrance, you know, wedding party, this song, parents, this song, so forth, so on. Um, or do you have actually script out saying it, telling everyone, you know, what you, everything is going on and what you're doing. So I'm going to start with Brentley on this one. Do you have a script? You know, do you have a full script or you just have like I have here? It has the information of what the songs are and you're just you looking at the songs and you're doing off the cuff in real time, and you know what to say because you've done it a hundred times before. I don't do it off the cuff. Um, our CRM, Check Cherry, will print all the stuff I need, be it songs and notes I have for each aspect of the day. But when it comes to what I'm using, like my script, so to speak, I will type one up for every one of my weddings that I'm at for uh, my intro before entrances so I can, you know, when we go out there, some people do it, some people don't, but I'll leave the booth, say hi to everyone, and make that intro, like, similar to Mitch Taylor, Nick Spinelli, Jason Janai. So I won't bring the script out there with me, but I will type one up for every wedding and try to memorize it the best I can. Part and parcel, um, Joe Bunn uh, preaches this technique about constantly saying the bride and groom's name over and over so you don't screw it up. So, and now it gets a little tricky if I have three or four weddings in a week and I'm try I find myself doing it more the day of, but I will go and take the script I've made and base it on some of the conversation we've had as my intro and kind of memorize it the best I can. Do I go for it word for word? No, but I will refer back to it at every given point I'm supposed to use the mic throughout the day. Because I don't want to freewheel anything and then sound like a blithering idiot because something stupid came out of my mouth. Or I drop an F-bomb because somebody said something funny in the audience. I, I, I And I know myself that if given the opportunity, I'll give my, I will take all the rope I can to hang myself. 
So I'm very cautious about what I say on the mic and rather have everything pre-planned. Okay. And you know, like I said before, I have what Tracy does for herself and myself is we have colored cards for each depart each section of the wedding, you know, a certain color for ceremony, certain color for reception. And tells, you know, of course she has the, the couple's name on there, you know. Um and you know how they want to, there's something like, you know, how they want to introduce certain start of a song. So like, you know, parents introduction song is X start at this time. If there's a, a start time, uh, you know, here's, and she's saying the parents' names. So she has a card with the parents' names versus I'm doing music. So it kind of walks you through stuff, but like first dance, daddy, daughter, mother, son, the cake cutting, I do all that. And it just says, you know, cake cutting, here's a song. If I need to start at a certain time or whatever, same thing with the dances, but I do everything off the cuff, basically. I look what the crowd's doing. And a lot of times I say similar things, but not exactly the same because I want to keep it a little bit different. But the thing is that, you know, I don't have a prescribed script. I have the songs. Again, I use I use Vibo. Um, and then we have the the cards. So I have the Vibo hard, card, uh, hard sheet as well as the cards that I can look at and say, okay, here's the song, how the two, how the couple wants to be introduced and so forth and so on. So I'm going to go over to uh, Mr. Dixon over there in the great state of Ohio. Uh, did you, uh, do you do a script for events or do you just uh, have, you know, palm cards basically and say, okay, the song is X and the couple's name is, you know, uh, Tom and Mary. Oh, Hey, give it up for Tom and Mary. Tom and Mary are going to do their first dance right now. You just do off the top of your head. Or do you actually have everything written out of what you're doing? Mine's is a combination of the two. Um, when I first started doing the weddings, especially the ones I did by myself for the first time, I literally looked at YouTube videos and put up different um, suggestions and wrote a script out. And I said it word for word. But it's almost like when I teach a lesson now, I've been doing it so long, I don't use the big, thick, teacher manual that tells you say this to the class do this next so i have gotten away from that but i still um because i also use bible and so i just i make sure i download the timeline i do two timelines one for me that has everything printed out exactly that i need and then you know a bare minimum one so i can give to the bride leave one on the table where the bridal party would be and whoever the go-to person is and for the um the photographer so therefore, everybody kind of like knows the time frame and where everything is going to be at. But then um, in Serato for my crates, I have like the um, bridal grand entrance, the first dance and all that. I have those those songs in separate crates. And then next to the crate, I have the time that each one is supposed to be at. And other than that, I use a script for when I introduce do the grand entrance because I try to do it, try to hype the crowd up and and announce it like um they do it at, at an award show. You know how the announcers are be like all grand. So I have that written out so I don't screw that up. But other than that, I just pretty much try to have exactly what I need and, and I go over what I'm going to say before I do it to make sure I don't stumble because I know the first two weddings I did, I was so has you know scared of messing up that every time i looked over the notes and went to the dance floor somebody stopped me or something happened and there was a like a break so when every, that got you know done with i had a brain fart and i ended up forgetting what i'm going to say so i pretty much stayed away from doing the word for word script and just wrote write down what i need for that moment I think the important part there also is having that, you know, call sheet, you know, basically timeline, uh, rough times. Cause we all know when we do weddings, it's never exactly a time the, the, the wedding may say starts at four 30, like yesterday was supposed to start at four 30 at four 40, we were starting. So, you know, weddings go 10, 15 minutes late. This happens, that happens. Aunt Sue's running late. Uncle Bob's got a flat tire. Things happen. So we all know that, that those, weddings never go off on time and things always change but having that rough timeline and sharing it with a photographer a videographer 
even with a caterer facility, I think that's a great thing having a copy of that. And that's actually something I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Tracy, say, hey, uh, Dwayne does this. It's a smart thing to have, uh, especially you're trying to communicate with them and kind of give them your timeline of what you're doing. Because how many times you're sitting there and the photographer, are we doing this? Are we doing that? What are we doing next? And then having a timeline, it's kind of cuts that out a little bit and it shows even more professionalism. That's actually a great thing to have. And that's a great little nugget right there of information that, uh, again, if you're keeping track at home, uh, all the nuggets that we give for uh, great stuff, it, it, it helps us out. And, and again, this is this is the reason why we share this stuff, because we all can learn something. We all uh, can grow better and become better at DJs, our craft. And that's that's what it's about. It's helping each other out and becoming better. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, Jeff over there in a great state of North Carolina and ask him, what does he do? Do you do a uh, basic information or do you uh, type out a full on script or what do you do for your uh, events? Uh, basic information. Uh, normally, I usually don't type out a full script. I usually um, will wing uh, what I'm saying, but I will you know, know what I'm going to say. And I usually have it approved beforehand with the uh, bride and groom, what we're, you know, going to, how they're going to be announced, what I'm going to say. I don't, I try not to add a whole lot in that is unnecessary. Um, so, you know, I keep it pretty simple. And, um, but one thing I, I like to make sure, you know, that what I am uh, I'm announcing, whether it be, you know, father, daughter, does he want to use his name? Uh, do we want to use her first name or is it now Mrs. So-and-so? So, you know, all those things get ironed out and those are the things that I write down and I have that on a sheet. Uh, I use it with the timeline. I usually have a, a printed timeline and for each event I'll have written out there, you know, the names is basically what I need and how they're going to be introduced. So, so I, I usually will wean, you know, half of it and uh, at least have the uh, the names and the timelines. Those are all scripted. And that's, that, that is an important thing is to make sure you have how the couple wants to be introduced as, and that, that's why I think a lot of people forget to do is, you know, they, they don't ask them, Hey, uh, how did two of you be introduced? And that's one of the things that we have on our valuable sheet. And it's, it's interesting because it causes a lot of conversation because some people, don't change your last names. Professional reason why it's, they're the last one of of the family line. They want to keep the name going. Uh, they may hyphenate names, so they want to be called Mrs. So and So because they're hyphenating the name. Uh, and this is a question that we ask. Or we, I've had a couple of grooms change their name to their now wife's name because of the fact that they like their wife's last name and they don't want the name to die out, so they actually change their name. So. How people want to do things is one of the things we always ask. And that's that's a really another great point out there, uh, Jeff, on doing it. And uh, really quickly before I go on with the rest of the panel, uh, who here, I want to see a show of hands, who here introduces themselves by name at the wedding? Says, hi, I'm so-and-so. Okay. See, I don't. And the reason why I don't is because the fact that um, it's not about me. It's about them. That's what we look at it as. But I know a lot of DJs do that, and they have, you know they have in the script, hey, this is I'm so and so with such a DJ service, and that's you know that's one of the things that I see a lot of guys do because they don't want to forget to put their name out there, and that's why I ask you who does script who doesn't do scripts because it's interesting because everybody has a different way of looking at things. Um, so I'm going to go next to, uh, Tommy, Tommy, what about you? Do you do a script or do you just do, you know, basic information or how, what do you do? Uh, there's certain parts of the wedding that I do like a script for, uh, introductions. I try to read off of like a script for the most part, um, just because it's in that specific order and that's like a very important part. So I really want everything to be on key there. Um, there's other announcements and stuff that, uh, if I have to get on and make like, that's not really scripted. I'm just kind of thinking about what I'm going to say prior to so that I'm not just going on the mic and totally winging it. But uh, I'm trying to think any other situations where I really read directly off of the script. Um, uh, I mean, other than entrances, again, I, I really read off word for word there for the most part. And then, uh, yeah, mainly just that introduction to um, inviting people in and, and so on so but I, I usually try to uh 
have an idea of what I'm saying before making any announcement, even if it's a last minute announcement, take a minute, think about what you're going to say and then speak it. And that's the important thing. Adrian, he's got a couple of things here. He says, uh, he says, no longer use the script. I use information on hand and, and deal with the circumstances on hand. And then he mentions himself when he opens a dance floor up after all the formal dances. And that's, you know, again, I know guys use their name uh, a couple of times. They use it once. They introduce themselves and when everyone's there after cocktail. So, again, it, it's always interesting how different people do different things. There's no right or wrong answer to doing stuff. And that's suggesting people need to change things my way or their way. I'm just giving you guys ideas. So when you're out there thinking of how am I going to do this, how am I going to do that, it kind of gives you a little bit of a how-to. It's not exactly a roadmap. But it kind of gives you some ideas to help you out and, and make you a better DJ and make you make your business better for you. And hopefully you make your customers very, very happy and they want to leave your five-star reviews on whatever you do, the not wedding wire, Google, um, whatever you use. So I'm going to go over to our friends, Jordan and Taylor. Uh, I'm going to ask the two of you guys, because again, you guys are uh, double teaming there and you guys are uh, do a lot of events together as well as events separate. Do you guys do scripts or do you guys just have a list of music or do you guys do a little bit different or how do you do it? So I do make a timeline and a script and I try to make it extremely detailed. Um, what's going on, what's being said, even for like songs for special dances or the ceremony, I'll put down it's Q1 or Q2 because I want everybody to know what's going on. Even the people that are working for me. And a lot of times he'll be doing the talking and I'm, queuing up the music so yeah um we, we have four different uh two or three different like script things we use um we have one for the reception one for the ceremony um and like depending on who's working with us and what we're doing because we you know sometimes we're doing decor and other things where uh it's we have more detailed stuff or coordinating where it's really detailed um yeah, our, we give it to the venue we'll give it to the photographer we i send it to the couple um a couple days before their wedding so they know exactly what's going on so it's correct they can't say that's not what we wanted to do or not want you know this said and i'll even works out good. i'll even have like little notes for me on there like slow down stop Big stop breath. for a second jordan because <laughs> uh yeah i'll just speed through it if i don't have it where like i have those hard pauses um as far as announcing us i do announce me like my name and then i introduce my wife she's usually behind the dj uh, controller while i'm doing the MC. but we don't use our business name like i don't say we're with how sweet it is events we, we just, just say we're jordan and taylor <laughs> and we'll be your djs and master of ceremonies tonight kind of and i give a little speech before um the grand entrance but nothing special i try to set the tone make everyone feel like you know i say something along the lines of uh you know they went through this list and you guys are the people they want it here so let's make some more memories that you've read you know you want them to feel special too you yeah. know they got they're here with the couple and yeah. And that, that, I, I just like having deep, like just so I know what's going on. I have a lot in my brain. So it's just nice sometimes to have it all in order. It's very detailed. We have, like and, I said, and, and that's the important part. Details are important. Detailed. <laughs> yeah. De details are very, very important, especially with your dealing with, uh, if it's a corporate client, if it's a wedding, if it's uh, even a, doing a bar gig, you know, uh, Brentley does bar gigs. Uh, Tommy does bar gigs. And I'm sure the bar says, hey, you know what? I need you to advertise X. I got a drink special tonight. Tonight is, you know, $5 hurricanes or $2 buds or whatever it is the special is. If the bar says, hey, I have a special tonight. Can you run it? Hey, I got $10. All you can eat chicken wings, whatever it is. I'm sure they come up to you and they say, hey, you know, uh, I need you to do this. You need to know kind of what to say. And you got to kind of figure that out. You, you you know, write down something. even just I'm preemptive writing. with that. If I'm at a club, especially the ones I'm at regularly, I will check in once I got my rig set up and I'm good to go. I will check in with the club and like, what specials do you have tonight? What do I need to announce? And if it's somewhere I haven't been very often or, you know, 
I'm sometimes they want to change last call times, things like that, just so I want to be on the same page so I know when to call last call and when to cut it. I check in so I can make all my notes just like a wedding, so to speak, before I get in the booth. Because if you're not treating it professionally, then you're not doing everything for the possible portion of your job as the entertainment. And that does mean, you know, using the mic, telling those specials and making sure you're ready for it. Yeah, and I think that, you know, again, it also helps with time management, too, and shows how professional you are versus other DJs. And I know uh, I know Jordan Taylor, they do some bar stuff, too, here and there as well. And I'm sure you guys do the same thing. You, you're you very uh, forward thinking on that. And I'm sure that, you know, you get any announcements, you you try to make sure you have that you're ready for that. Um when you do an announcement at, let's say, a corporate gig or a uh, bar, I'm going to ask you this one um, for the two of you. Uh, do you do the same thing? Do you go up to the uh, bar manager or you go up to the bartender saying, hey, what specials are tonight? Or do you go up to uh, the person in charge at the uh, corporate gig and say, do you need any announcements or anything like that? Or do, you, or do you kind of get that before you do the gig? Work like corporate, like parties and stuff we usually same as a wedding not as detailed but we do have like kind of like a timeline yeah that we ask them questions if they even if they want us to make any announcements during the night um you know so we try to get that beforehand so we're not trying to hunt people down the day of or when we get there and at a bar usually the manager who booked me or something we've already either talked about it through text or when we get, when I get there and we're setting yeah. up, one of us will talk to them about it, but we really don't have like a script or anything when we go to a bar. And that, that's, I think it's a little more freehand in a bar. Cause again, yeah. it's determined from bar to bar to bar to bar. And uh, Tommy, what about you? When you do, I know you do some bar gigs, you do some other events. When you do a bar gig, um, besides standing there and get your cool pictures on Instagram and stuff like that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what what do you do? Do you do you talk to the bar manager beforehand? And ask is there specials or anything like that, or do you talk to him? Or when you do the uh, gigs at the uh, the golf course by your house uh, when you're here in the summertime, back home our area uh, in the summertime, do you uh, do you talk to them and ask them when announcements they need for their event? Yeah, I usually try talking to like either the manager or uh, whoever booked me, and yeah, I'll ask. Uh, yeah, is there anything that you need of me that I should be aware of ahead of time, uh, announcements wise, or yeah, like you said, specials or any sort of like promotions? Um, and then I always tell them too, if you need anything, like always just come up right, come right up to me, and we'll make it happen. That way, they know that um, whatever they need is just as important to me as it is to them, and we can get it all figured out. And that that's the big thing is communication. That's that's one thing I always feel that um as a professional dealing with different people, uh, be it a venue, be it a caterer, be it whatever. And this is one of the things that uh, I'm gonna the next question's gonna come up. This is something that happened yesterday. Um so Tracy uh walked up to the manager of the facility and the couple, they were talking. And uh, for long and short of it, uh, the cake, uh, the baker uh, did not cut the cakes. So they had the cake for the couple for their cake cutting. And then they had sheet cakes for the guests. And they were supposed to be pre-cut squares. So what I had to do is basically scoop it out, put it onto a plate and give it. Well, unfortunately, the, the baker did not do that. So the girl, the manager of the facility she turned to tracy and asked hey do you mind uh cutting cake and tracy's like yeah no problem um I, let me go get some gloves and i'll go in the kitchen and i'll cut cake so she cut the cake up for the portions for people and she said you know ask basically what you want to do and that is not usually a thing that a dj does and again tracy because she does the coordination time management uh, you know, she does step in to do things like that, you know, put away the centerpiece at nighttime because she's not doing anything. When I'm the dance floor is running, she had no, nothing better to do. So she'll put away centerpiece and stuff like that. I know when Tommy, when he, Tommy had a chance to work with me, he saw that, that Tracy was doing that kind of stuff because she wants to keep busy. And we're kind of, I'm concentrating on dance floor. And when Tommy was with me, we we're concentrating on dance floor. 
I'd like to know what other things you guys have been asked to do at an event that's kind of outside the DJ area. And I, I know Jordan and Taylor because they do a little bit more of this DJ and they do the event uh, decorations and stuff like that. But what is, what is something you've been asked to do outside of the normal DJ area to help a customer out to, to do something for them? Should we bring? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna. Should we bring up the time they had the do-it-yourself arch that we all were allergic to? Oh well, yeah, and I had to do that to do it the next day. They had made this. Their grandpa or something had made it. Was a beautiful arch, but they had wrapped it in like pine, like real live. Like it was around Christmas time, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was live. Yeah. And they asked us to move it, and they it was too big for before. Outside the hallway, so then we had to try to sh get it in the door. It was too big, and then yeah, I had an allergic reaction. And then that was also the one where I had to hold the door open when it was raining, and they were outside getting pictures with the fireworks. I was just drenched. I was it was too much that day. <laughs> we weren't actually DJing that one. No, that was, was just the coordinator and decorator. <laughs> I was like, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, and then I left, and I had like hives on my arms. Ouch. Is there is there, any, is there another time as well? I know we can go through probably three or four times, but um, I had called out yesterday for what it just happened to us. So, any, and there's another one for you guys. Hmm. I mean, people always asking the DJ to do weird things, and like, how, how many times do you ask where the bathroom's at or what's for dinner? It's like. That, that we're, when time's a bar open, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been asked weird questions like that. Like, uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I know someone's asked me, like, where's the bathroom? Or, yeah. There's know. a Christmas party I do, and it's the bathroom's in a really weird spot. It kind of looks like a closet, and I get asked that about a hundred <laughs> times. My assistant, I was just like, just, you should, I'm just going to have you stand over there and point That's with a sign bathroom. because. <laughs> Mr. Dixon, what about you? Have you run into a situation you get asked to do something outside of the DJ realm? And I know you've been DJing probably not as long as some people here, but still, I'm, I'm sure you guys have something there that you've run into that uh, it's outside the uh, the normal realm of doing something. Um, not as far as weddings. I'm trying to think. Um, no more than do AV work um, for a slideshow for someone that um, couldn't get theirs to work and bring in my extra projector. Uh, but most of mine has come from being a school teacher and being the DJ. So they expect me to still babysit, basically. <laughs> so that's that would be mine. And, and that sound bad. Uh if anything didn't prepare someone for being a DJ, I think being a teacher is part of that because not only the patience for people who don't understand what's happening and going on, because they don't do it every day, but also have to have the mindset, even adults, and I'm sure everyone here can agree, a wedding party is sometimes it's like herding cats. They see something shiny, they go running for it. Wherever that shiny item is, all oh, the bars open, I can get a drink, or hey, I we gotta go to the bathroom. Everybody goes to go to the bathroom. It's 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 amazing. Um, with wedding parties, a lot of times, sometimes they're very well behaved. Sometimes they're like, you know, Hey, you got, you got to corral them. So I'm going to go over to Jeff, Jeff, what, uh, unique things have you had to do at a, uh, outside the DJ realm that, uh, is, uh, odd or odd question you had. Uh, well, since I used to videotape and, um, uh, and then photograph weddings, um, uh, years ago, uh, I did get asked to, um, take a picture of the photographer with the couple. So they're like, you, you can work this camera. You're a Nikon user. So can you, uh, can you take our picture with the, uh, you know, the photographer with the uh, couple? So I had to do that. So that was no big deal. Um, but one thing that was within the realm, um, was a, uh, about a year ago, I had a, a gig, uh, it was called a redemption prom. It was at a church. And, uh, so it was basically for adults, prom for adults who, maybe wanted a second chance at a prom or whatever. So, um, and it got thrown on me the day before the event that they were going to have a secret wedding happen during the, uh, during the prom. So 
that kind of went a little bit above and beyond what I, I was uh, ready for. But, uh, you know, I went with the flow and made it happen. And that's some of the fun stuff. I'm going to give you another fun one that we've done. Uh, actually, I, this was me. Uh, it was for the uh, bouquet, uh, bouquet and garter toss. So we did the um, bouquet toss. We went to the garter toss. And instead of the bride sitting down in the chair, I sat down in the chair, pulled my pants leg up, and put the garter on my leg. And they blindfolded the groom. And, and the groom was a great guy. He he loved jokes and humor. And his wife and his mother wanted me to do that. And so I sat down in the chair. I you know, pulled my sock down, down around my ankle so you, you know, you'd feel you know, leg, but you know, big man, hairy man's leg. And you put the garter up right, right below the knee. It wasn't the pants was pulled all the way up. It was right below the knee, uh, the garter. And all of a sudden uh, they bring him in there to the room and the music's going and he gets down and they put his hands on my ankle and he feels my ankle. Then he goes up a little bit and he's like, he's feeling there's a hairy man's leg there and goes up a little bit longer. Then he pulls the, the thing off and he sees me. He's He's laughing and stuff like that. It was brother hugs all night long, and uh, I gave him the guys took the garter off and gave it to him. But uh, there, right there, is something that uh, I don't normally do that. But the thing is that uh, the his wife and his uh, his mother wanted that so bad. And when the mother in law, his mother in law, found out about it, she's like, "Yes, you guys got to do this. You guys, they were begging us, so we did it." But there's always you know fun stuff like that. You always always get asked to do some unique things. Uh, DJ Brantley, what about you? Do I, between the bars, the the, uh, the weddings, and uh, just being overall in lacrosse, uh, the crazy stuff that goes on there, it's like Animal House on uh, steroids, I'm sure. Oh yeah, wow. You know, I've never been asked to do anything too crazy or outlandish. I mean, uh, I did play the intro to Just Had Sex from the Lonely Island. Uh, there was a story behind it, and it was DJing a friend's wedding. And the first time they hooked up was in the basement of Legends, and I caught them coming out of the basement. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You guys just did what you think. I think you did. And so I threw it out in the club. And they both looked at me, laughed, and, you know, went out their separate way that night. So when it came time for their grand march, I was their DJ also. I'm like, you know, we're going to have a little fun with this. And I threw that in, but only played the you know, the intro, dun, dun, and then when he says sometimes, and then drop their real song. Just, it, but outside of maybe helping carry a few groomsmen out to the car or, you know, assisting with the, getting a bride out to the car because they were passed out, maybe helping, you know, hand out garbage bags at a couple of my weddings when people were puking. But I, I can't think of anything that's been that outlandish that I've been asked to do. Well, my neck, my back to open the reception right after the first dance. And the bride's like, I want my mom to leave. I don't want her here afterwards. We don't get along. And I know she hates that song. So I went for it and I'm like, okay, you're, you're, you're doing it. And just as she said, her mom got up and walked out and she's like, we can go to normal music now. Cool. I, I mean, I did, you know, musically lay out one of the best pranks I've ever laid out in my life. Uh, my ex-girlfriend happened to walk in the bar last two weekends ago. And you know that wonderful song from NLE Chapa, Slut Me Out? And there's that chant that goes, slut me out, slut, slut, slut me out. I couldn't have timed it any better. I hit play right when she walked in the door. And then when I saw that, I decided to loop there's some whores in this house underneath it. And let that play until she walked out of the bar like 10 seconds later. So, yeah, I, I will do crap like that all of the time when given the opportunity. And well, having, couple... ex, having an ex-girlfriend that, you know, unfortunately uh, decided not to uh, stay with you and decided to go and cheat on you behind your back, I'm sure yeah. it, 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 it put a, a bad taste in your mouth. And I don't know why you would walk in the club I'm DJing at, let alone not expect me to pull some crap like that. But I also get asked to do a lot of that trolley kind of stuff at weddings. And that's nights can be fun. You know, it all boils down to what's happening, what's transpiring. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Tommy, Tommy again, um, 
I know you do a lot of different stuff, especially with bars and clubs right now. And again, you're doing the events with, uh, you know, uh, weddings and parties and so forth. What, what have you been asked to do that is outside the normal realm of DJing, but also is there any, like, uh, any funny thing you've been asked, like, Hey, where's the bathroom at? Or, Hey, what's for dinner? Or, Hey, what's on the menu at a bar? Or, Hey, what, what's great tasting here? Or have you been asked to do something like, Hey, uh, I need you to wear this funny hat when this person comes in into the room or something. Uh, well, first of all, like I like to help out, you know, the venue in any way I can. So, um, there's been times where like at the end of the night, uh, if it's a mess up by, uh, the, the place I usually play at the DJ booth is kind of in the corner and then there's a stage that people can be on. So if there's cups or bottles and stuff all over, like the end of the night, I'll help them pick it up. Uh, or, you know, if we've got to move something from one part of the venue to another, uh, I always want to be helpful in that sense. Like if everybody can get out of there earlier then everybody's happy. So I think that's good to build up that sort of uh, relationship with venues or managers or whatever um, and just lend in a hand. But uh, beyond that, I'm trying to think of like any funny things like, yeah, I've been asked, yeah, where's the bathroom? Uh, I think the funniest thing that might have happened was I was doing um, I was doing like a, a wedding last summer and uh, somebody asked me, they came up and asked me for a drink. I was like, I'm not the bartender. <laughs> so um, then they were like, oh, well, where could I go get one? And I was like, oh, you got to go out that door. Bars out there. So. <laughs> I'd probably say they had, they had enough to drink already. You'd be like, no, nah, bro, you're cut off. You're done. You're coming to well, be asking that was, for uh, a drink. Yeah, that you're cut off. That was the first. Uh, actually, it wasn't the first, but that was a that was a true Wisconsin wedding there that I that I was DJing. So uh, I, I bet DJ Brettley sees a lot of that. But I'm pretty sure it started around two or three o'clock was when the reception started and uh we went until like 12 o'clock that night so <laughs> long day and that's that that's always a fun thing so i'm gonna go on to our last part of the show tonight and uh this is going to be a kind of a little quicker thing um cable management this is one of the things that uh does help you protect gear it does protect help you protect from people tripping does help you protect uh, from getting damage to uh, not only just cables, but to other things. And I see pictures and photos of people uh, with cable management. You know, sometimes it's really great, really cool. Sometimes cable management is looks like a uh, a bowl of pasta on the thrown on the floor. So I had to ask uh, this simple question, and again, uh, this is something that everybody does stuff a little bit differently. Um, and you have cables hanging down from speakers, even my, uh, R uh, my RCF J eights, the, uh, head unit, the top part of the speaker, uh, the array on top, it's connected via cable to the bottom to where the amplifier and woofer is at. And we found a long time ago, it works really great for that cable, which is a speak on cable is the gravity stands uh, cable holder. It clicks right in the back of the of the pole. Cable goes right inside there, lays right down real nicely. Um, the other thing also, of course, is Velcro straps, which um, you know we have plenty of as well. So my question to you is, if you're putting cable in, you're running, let's say, a normal K12, or you're running an Evo, um, a EV speaker on top of a pole, or you're running any kind of speaker that you have cabling for that you run from the top to the bottom. You're going like, uh, you know, you have a speaker on top, you run a subwoofer or from top down a speaker um, stand. How do you secure your cables to the stand to make sure it looks not only just neat, but also that way it lessens the likelihood of someone, you know, hitting it or tripping on it or so forth. So I'm going to start with Jeff. Jeff, I know you got the uh, LD system speakers uh, but also, you know, you can do sometimes regular tops and subs. How do you usually connect the, you know, secure the cable going from the top to the bottom of the either speaker stand or the subs? I use Velcro ties uh, for my Mackies when I'm using those on a stand. Uh, you know, the Velcro ties just stay on the stands. Uh, they're, they're, they just live there, you know. Uh, once it gets down to the floor, uh, I use cable troughs or, you know, just a little... Uh, 
uh, the, the ones you can get from Home Depot or or wherever, you know, I cover the cover them up with that. And I bought, bought the six foot links and just cut them in half. So I have two threes. Um, so I have several of those. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, you know, making it look tidy is that's part of the business. And the people that don't, uh, you know, I, uh, they just don't get it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it, just today, I, I've got two gigs this weekend on the, at the same time. So my son is going to be doing one of them. It's just at the elementary school. And I was uh, showing him how to hook up uh, my second system. And I'm like, okay, so grab the, grab the mic cable, you know, and, um, you know, let's plug it in up here and plug it into the mixer. And so he grabs the mic cable, cable and he, he kind of lets it fall out. And, you know, it has six knots in it. And I'm like, you didn't grab it right. You opened it up wrong. <laughs> like, So I had to teach him, like, you don't stick it through the hole and then pull it out the other side. You know, it's going to it's gonna have six knots in it. So uh, little things like that are, you know, frustrating for those of us who, you know, coil cables, you know, daily, weekly uh, for, versus those people who, one have never done it and two don't get it why you need to you know coil them correctly so fun fun part of being you know djs and that's the important and think if i remember correctly before you said on the rubber uh troughs that you use you kind of cut out the center a little bit to make it easier for the cable the bottom yeah the bottoms are really tight because they are meant to be like permanent permanent installs so the bottom is um, and it, it, it depends on the type of brand, but you know, the ones I have, the, the rubber is kind of hard and they're about, you know, they're a good inch tall. Um, so yeah, to, to get the, the cord and sometimes two or three cords in there, depending on, you know, how I'm running things, uh, you know, cable and a mic cable is, is typical what's going in those. Uh, it was just so hard to pull it apart and stick, you know, I had to like every inch I had to like poke it in, you know, stuff it in, stuff it in there when it's upside down, then you flip it over. Right. Um, so I just took an exacto and just went right down the edge of that, uh, of the slit in the back, made it like, you know, about, uh, you know, good, a third of an inch to almost a half inch wide. So now you just drop them in there, flip it over and it's super quick. So little, little hacks like that, that, you know, make it, make your life a few seconds here, a few seconds there. It really makes a difference. And that helps out tremendously. Brentley, what about you, who always uh, has uh, tops and bottoms? Um, how do you secure your uh, top to the bottom with the cables? And what do you do Velcro. for uh, cables on the ground? Uh, Velcro for all my cables. I have white and black. Uh, what were they like? Four ninety nine for a hundred pack at Walmart. And then when it comes to being on the ground, I use gaff where I can. Um, I do have carpets, um, two that are black, two that are white, uh, or gray rather, that I can cover the cables up if I can't gaff. And then anything else, the loose stuff, not in my toad, I can just tuck all the extra cabling, which isn't much because I've measured my setup out fairly accurately. And I can just tuck all those back inside of the toad. And when I'm using a facade, I'll leave them on the floor because no one's really looking at the floor of my facade. And that's pretty much all of it. I can't think of when I'm using, like, and inside my scrims, yeah, I do have cable ties on my white scrims. But when I'm using um, scrims on my speaker stands or lighting stands, I should say, those don't, you don't need cable ties because they have the Velcro at the top and they just fold out correctly. Okay. So, Tommy, what about you? How do you secure your uh, cables? Uh, so for my speaker stands, I usually have uh, scrims that go on them. So those scrims basically block out anybody from being able to access cables. Um, if there is, uh, there's times where I don't run the scrims, if I, especially if I'm like outside. Uh, in that case, I'm using Velcro ties. And then uh, on the floor, I usually uh, am always using gaff tape. Uh, unless, again, if I'm outside and it's in like grass or something like that. Um then it gets a little bit more tricky with the way you can kind of keep cables managed. So I try to just direct as much as I can, like straight under my table. Um, so I've got like my table and then my two speakers as close to the table as possible. That way there's very limited amount of cords um, out in people's way uh, that may be walking by or uh, just crossing into the area. Yeah, I know some people use those uh, 
hard uh, plastic uh, cable runners. They actually have a top that locks up and locks down. They're black and yellow and they're, they're pretty wide. I know people I've seen uh, DJs use those too. Um, I think that would be more for, because they're designed for a forklift to drive over them and take heavy weight. Um, I, I would definitely would say that's a little, that's a little industrial, but again, you're doing the right thing by securing what you're running cabling. So Mr. Dixon, what about you? How do you secure your cables to your speaker poles and how do you secure the cables on the ground? If it's a tripod, I have, I think it's gator clips. It's like a um, plastic clip that you click on the um, pole and it has a little hook that you run the cables down. And then for each one of my cables, I have Velcro on them to keep them together. So if it's multiple cables coming down, I'll like Velcro them down so it's like one line. But And then on the floor, if I have time, I have what Jeff used. It's a long, the long plastic strip which you can put over. If I don't have time, I have um like these little rubber mats that I throw down and then, or at least try to get the cords to go evenly against the wall and like use like one of my totes or, or something to keep it flush against the wall so it's out the way. Okay. Yeah, the gaffer tape is always great to have. Um, I I posted a while ago on my personal Facebook. I guess I know I'm a. Uh, a DJ who cares because I have multiple colors and we have a bin on the van that has multiple colors of gaffer tape. So it's like black, gray, a couple of different browns, white. It's like all these different colors because I like to blend in that people don't notice that much the color. Uh, and then you run into places that don't allow gaffer tape. So the, the, the cable cover, the cable runner that like Jeff runs or you run, uh, Dwayne, those are really nice to have as addition to uh, having tape it's always you get you have multiple tools in your toolbox and that's go to one thing so uh jordan and taylor how do you guys handle your cables going from your tops down and how do you handle the cables on the ground go ahead my velcro top down um if i can't find my velcro or um i don't have any left because i didn't pack it i'll just use a little piece of gaff tape <laughs> Cause I just have to have it look nice and I don't want anyone to see it very crazy about that. And then on the ground, um, you can put gaff tape or we'll have a mat. Um, yeah, we carry mats too. Um, just black, usually like the ones that are like in a vestibule out of business, like the heavy, the anti-fatigue mats, they're kind of foamy. No, like, uh, when you walk into like a bank, oh, like the runners, black ones the, that the don't rubber like runners. fold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll use like small versions of that, but uh, mostly gaff. We carry a couple different sizes. And a lot of our uh, cables are inside our podium too. So yeah, yeah, we only have our pretty much two speaker cables and I'll plug if I have to plug into the podium, but power is usually like closest power and I try to run against the wall as much as possible. Um, but yeah, gaffer's tape and then uh, all our cables have Velcro on them already. So like I'll use that one to go on the pole that's already on there. So when I roll it up at the end of the night, we Velcro everything before we put it and away. That that right there is having those, uh, having Velcro on the cables is nice because then you your cables are all nice and neat. Um, I'm sure you guys do the same thing. We have a few bins. You know, you go to Home Depot and you get plastic tubs. Um, yep. And those tubs, you know, we have a couple different sizes, a couple different colors for different things. Uh, one of the ones we have for the speakers, uh, we have one, one bin for each set of speakers. It has some stuff in there, like it has IEC cables. It has XLR cables, a couple of different lengths. It has an extension cord. It has, um, I have a uh, power strip in each one. Um, a, and I also have uh, uh, some other stuff in there. And one of the things those cables, all those cables have, they all have Velcro on them. Because I went through and put a stri at least one strip of Velcro on them. So you have that there. And, you know, why not take advantage of it? It's there. Go ahead and use it and secure your cables to make it look nice and hide things. It, it's, it gives that nice little look um, to things. And I don't think they're, the DJs who don't secure it, I don't think it's not a thing that they don't care. I think they just don't, don't know how to or they don't know where to or they have not been taught how to. And I think it's just, you know, it's experience. 
and you you grow. And when you look at when you first started your first setups, your first setups, your first 10 setups, you know, and you look at now, it's like day and night. And, you know, I, I shared some pictures with you guys of some of my older setups that goes way back. And I can look at that setup and go, wow, that, that looks horrible. And it's all about experience and it's all about, hey, you know what, this is this is now versus this is 15 years ago. And that's one of the things that I hope this all helps everyone out with everything and, and helps people grow and grow their business. And, you know, one thing I always ask is from everyone, I hopefully they're having fun, that they're enjoying themselves and that their nights all are great. Their gigs are great. And, I, and again, if you if it helps you out, mention it down below, put it down in the chat, put it down on, on YouTube. Uh, say, hey, you know, this helps me out. That helps me out. I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys do? What do you guys, you guys have any tricks or anything or something funny happening at uh, one of your gigs? Someone asking you, a, you know, a question like, Hey, uh, instead of where the bathroom's at, Hey, where is, um, where's this at? Or where's that at? You know, tell me what you've heard. Tell me if there, you've been asked to do something that's, you know, above and beyond being a, uh, a DJ. So with that said, we have another end for another show. And, you know, we seem to always go over by a few minutes, longer than the hour we normally are supposed to have. But that's because of a lot of great information and a lot of great stuff. And then, uh, you know, it's always a, a pleasure. And tonight I'm going to have uh, Jeff take us out and close out the show. Jeff, please. Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next week. Have a good one. Good night.